A judge in Illinois just ruled illegal immigrants have the right to keep and bear arms. So rather than the circle with the line through it, we need like a thumbs up emoji there. The case is pretty simple. Police arrested an illegal immigrant living in Chicago with a gun back in 2020. They charged him for violating the federal law banning illegal immigrants from having guns. It's been on the books for a long time. Judge Sharon Johnson Coleman just decided the Second Amendment applies to him, the illegal immigrant, like everybody else, so he can have a gun. In her decision, she wrote that Humberto Flores received and used the handgun solely for self-protection and protection of property during a time of documented civil unrest in the spring of 2020, the summer of love. Court documents show Flores fired the gun at moving cars during the BLM riots in Chicago. He argues police officers warned him about looters who were approaching his neighborhood. Key to this ruling is that the judge says Flores' conduct, conduct heavily impacted her decision. He had no criminal record and was not considered a risk to public safety. This case is just one of many challenging that federal statute that prevents illegal immigrants from possessing a firearm. There are cases unfolding in states nationwide. Shan Wu is here, former federal prosecutor, term criminal defense attorney, once a uh, very senior officer at the DOJ. Good to see you. Um, <clears throat> should I be shocked that an Obama appointee found a gun control law that she didn't like? <laughs> uh, no, but I think it's very fascinating that this whole push towards expanding the deference to the Second Amendment uh, in some ways has kind of come full circle here, where something that really seems counterintuitive, the idea that someone who's not here legally still has that right and you can't use this particular statute, which is commonly known as the felon in possession statute. But the way it's written, she really zeroed in on the language. He's not a felon. And the gray area, of course, is whether or not his status and, frankly, I think the way he was using the gun calls a little bit into question, you know, how peaceful right. he is. No, I, mean, I guess the question, though, is what constitutional rights and protections then become absolute, right? Because illegal immigrants uh, are already are still counted in a census. Mm -hmm. That is a huge deal in terms of rep representation. Um, but then where do we get for to right to work or right to vote or right to have a license to practice medicine or right to have a license to do all of these other things? Isn't, isn't this opening Pandora's box? It could be. I, I do think, I hate to say this, but I think Congress would have to be a little bit more powerful here because there's no question that the Constitution applies to people who are not here legally. They're, quote, persons under the Constitution, so that makes perfect sense. The problem here is you need to draw the statute more narrowly, and you might have to actually specify that being here in a non-legal status would also make you not eligible to carry the firearm. Interesting. Uh, you have to think about what you said of Congress actually doing its job, which they <laughs> right. rarely seem to be um, able to do. Key part of the ruling, Justice Clarence Thomas wrote in the court's majority opinion, we hold that when the Second Amendment's plain text covers an individual's conduct, the con Constitution presumptively protects that conduct. Uh, look, you talk to a lot of folks. You're pretty popular in liberal legal circles. Was there a bit of chuckling when people read this? Was oh. it sort of... Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, well, more feel, than a bit. Yeah, it feels like a little bit. You know, chickens coming home to roost. <laughs> so, in yeah. what sense? In the sense of it's been associated, not, not entirely accurately, but it's very much been associated with the conservative court, a conservative movement to really expand the protections of the Second Amendment for gun owners. And here, of course, it kind of comes into conflict with the idea of oh, we also have to include this big issue with. Uh, you so know, you said you said that the immigrants. Congress might have to do its job, right? Uh, Flores was here illegally, therefore he broke a U.S. law by coming right. and by by staying. So it, this isn't that this this is that the Second Amendment applies without Congress amending the law. So Congress could pass mm -hmm. a law tomorrow that says illegal immigrants cannot have weapons, period. Right. And that would fix this situation. I, I think so, yeah. I mean, I would agree. Uh, you have me in funny positions. I'm agreeing with Clarence Thomas, too. <laughs> but I think he's exactly right. Oh, where, it's where, 2024, all right. things happen, don't they? <laughs> it, it's this presumption. The Constitution creates that presumption that whether you're illegally here or not, you have that right as a person here. But if the specific law says you're not allowed to possess it because of your status or a crime you've committed, then that would fix the presumption. All right. Uh, Andrew Roberts, I thought, rightly pointed out, he's one of our star producers, that you've, you've got a lot of these cases in different courts. So it probably ends up at the Supreme Court at one point 
um, or another. But oftentimes, these district judge rulings and everything else play into other cases. And if you, as the left is sort of chuckling and saying, hey, this serves, serves uh, Second Amendment activists, right, right uh, they are also saying, look, that these kinds of rulings then play into driver's licenses and whether the driver's license of a California resident who's an illegal alien uh, is valid in Texas. How, right. how does that play out now? That is really the tension with the federalism system. Uh, you obviously have situations in many areas of the law where the states have like this patchwork of differing kinds of decisions. And the Supreme Court, I think, it's hard to tell when they're willing to nationalize something. They're clearly willing to do it in the election context right. here. But for something like this, I think they're going to keep punting to Congress, which, as you're kind of suggesting, means that nothing may happen. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.